I'm already hearing some fairly bad things about the Oma. I'm completely ignoring them as well, by the way. But I'm hearing them, and it's weird considering it's pretty high on the electrical damage. Its status is pretty high. Okay, its crit is pretty goddamn low. Its build cost might be a bit much, but really the only problem here is the two Argon, because I've said it before and I'll say it again. If a Nighten Alert pops up, do it. Because it's always handy to have 15 or 20 of those things. Because if Vorban learnt us anything, it's that you really need to collect these things and have a... F Not a huge stockpile, about 15 to 20. Just in case the new primes are very heavy on those things. It does, of course, have a new stance that comes with it. The Sovereign Outcast that is available from this enemy. The Kuva Heavy Gunner that only seems to spawn on the... The Kuva Fortress tile set, which makes it a bit of a pain to get a hold of. Mainly because to get to the Kuva Fortress, you have to basically be inside of the War Within quest, which means you've got to have done the second dream, which means you've got to have done a lot of quests beforehand, and it's not an easy point to get to in the game, so this is definitely a weapon that's aimed more up there from where the stance is but this really seem that high on the damage but considering this thing comes with a dash and a v polarity already in it and unranked that's not bad at all obviously this thing has some really nice perks to it the fact it is just straight up elemental damage with it being electricity it means you can mod it for magnetic and corrosive really easily. It depends what faction you go up against as to what elemental combo you want to actually build this thing for. But its attack speed being only 0 0.917, these things are slow. I will openly admit, I did throw Prime Fury in these and that will not be coming off. Even despite the fact it has 15% crit chance, I did try it for a crit build and to be fair, it kind of just did better with a status build because obviously it has a 30% status chance. But its main thing seems to be the fact that it is the highest damaging spin attack melee weapon in the game. Of course the Telos Bolt is coming in behind which means Maiming Strike, the mod that gives a 90% chance of doing crit for a spin attack, the fact it's only got a 15% crit chance is ridiculously low, but having a 90% chance of doing crit when you do that is pretty useful. It's just a bit of a shame it's only really got a 2 times multiplier. A 2.5 would obviously have been better. But if you do like running Maiming Strike builds, this is probably the best weapon to do that on. But again, it's this or the Telos Bolt Ace. The Telos Bolt Ace does have that whole, what is it, violent spinning attacks that damage all enemies in range. Speaking of range, it does happen to unfortunately suffer just a little bit on range. I like melee weapons with a bit of range, hence the reason I use giant hammers. And even whips. I prefer melee whips, it's just there hasn't really been a powerful one in a long time and considering some of the heavy melees are just do so much more damage it is obviously sacrificing damage for range if you would use something like that but the range on these seemed fairly short when I first started using them so it's nothing a reach mod wouldn't fix but putting reach mods in will kind of affect the damage that it does unfortunately on the whole point of damage, to be fair, how you mod this just simply depends on what you're going up against more than anything else. Obviously things like modding it for Magnetic for Corpus and Corrosive for Grenier. Or Viral or Radiation, it doesn't really matter because you can put any combination on. But I did prefer running this thing with the whole body count to increase, increase the combo duration then Drifting Contact, which does the same thing, and adds 40% status chance, and then throwing Weepman Wounds on, which adds 45% status chance with combo. It's kind of like Blood Rush, but for status. 
And once them three mods were in here, it was actually pretty fun building that counter up. And then doing, you're not really doing more damage like you would if you built it for crit, but because it only has 15% crit, it wasn't really you, that useful for crit. Unless, of course, you did throw in a maiming strike build, which, well, I don't really have one of those. Because I do have the mod, I just don't use it. I think the only thing it's in is the Telos Bolt Ace, and I haven't used those in a long time. But I did try it in here, but to be fair, I didn't really notice that much of a difference because I still think, considering I think I got this to 742 elemental damage, and that was without using the dual stat mods, and it just didn't seem to do that much damage. When it comes to Tonfaz, this thing, it sits on top. It is by far the best of the Tonfa weapons out there. To be fair to it though, it wasn't that bad of a weapon. I did find it useful for a lot of different things, but it's not something I'm gonna retire my Helio core for anytime soon. And it just, it looked kind of weird for something that basically came from within the index event because the enemies in there use these. I was expecting them to be better than they are, but they're still not that bad of a melee weapon. They are useful, just, could have been a little bit more useful.